This is your mom's favorite show, Beer and Chill Podcast. My name is Jan. And I'm Craig. And we would really appreciate if you would stop by and listen to our show. We are talking about interesting facts about your favorite movies, games and TV shows. For example, did you know that Christopher Lee and Ian McKellen had a real life beef because Christopher Lee wanted to play Gandalf in Lord of the Rings? And many other great facts. We hope you check us out and enjoy the rest of your show. Bye bye. What's your favorite scary movie? They mostly come at night. Mostly. Welcome to my world, bitch. Your suffering will be legendary, even in hell. Welcome, victims, to the Horgasm Podcast. Kill the lights, lock the doors, get comfy, and prepare for the sexiest and scariest podcast around. I'm Nick, and with me as usual is my co-host, Allie. Welcome to our podcast. <laughs> we, are, we are here to entertain you. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. We watched Grandma's Boy this week. So good. <laughs> it's so, good. so much fun. Oh my god. You know, it's one of those movies that like, it's literally like Galaxy Quest last week. It's, yeah. You forget how much you love it until you watch it and you're like, oh yeah. This is just one of those dumb, mindless movies that is it's, just like so much fun. It really is. Oh. And there's, there's, there's one or two scenes that are a little... Spooky-ish, but... So it fits with the <laughs> orgasm theme, but... Yes, yes, of course. It's just a funny movie. Oh, it's funny. It's a good stoner comedy. Yes. Uh, um, made by Adam Sandler. You know, executive produced. Yeah. yeah. It was actually written by uh, Nick Swarzen. Oh, okay. He got, yeah, he was one of the writers. Yes, so, yes, yes. And he plays Jeff in this yes. movie. He's, he's a funny guy. This is just he's not, so funny. Yeah. This is an Adam Sandler movie, so it's got all his regular guys in it. Not him. He's on this one. Yes. He produced it, but no, right. this wasn't his his movie. Yes. But, but you've got, like, David Spade and yep. um, Rob Schneider and the main Peter, character Peter guy. Dante, he's, yeah. uh, Alan Co- Covert. Covert. Yes, yes, yes. And he's running, like, almost every one yes. of his of Adam Sandler's movies. Like, he was the the bum that he was his, uh, his caddy on, Happy Gilmore. Yes. Um, he was a reporter on Mr. Deeds. Yes. He's been in almost every one that I know of. Yep. I think, yeah, he, uh, yeah, he was in a, in a bunch of them. Well, being one of Adam Sandler's friends is profitable, so. Yes. That's nice. Very profitable. <laughs> friends in high places and all that kind of stuff, yep. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was fun. I'm, I'm glad that we're doing comedies. It's kind of a fun break. And, like, while we've been doing this, I've been watching lots of horror movies just, like, personally, like, not on the podcast. But I've watched, like, I watched about a few, la- talked about a few last week. But I've watched, like, since we last recorded, I've watched, like, the old Last House on the Left I talked to you about. Yep, yep. I've watched the Amityville Horror, the older one, um, which was good. I watched The Possession of Hannah Grace last night, which just came out a couple days ago on Netflix. Nice. And that was really fun. It was like, it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be because the trailer was super spooky. But, oh, and I watched um, Found Footage 3D that I was telling you about. That one was creepy. That's the one that I actually, like, when I was done, I was like, I don't think I can sleep, actually. I'm going to have to watch something funny, which hasn't happened to me in years. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. And I don't know if it was just because I was watching it at, like, 2.30 in the morning or, I don't know, but it was fantastic. Yeah. There is, there's mm-hmm. a trailer dropped. I'm trying to find the movie's called. Uh, stars Bruce Willis. Um, and it's got, uh, oh, the guy from, who played the Punisher. Oh, the guy from, like, uh, Walking Dead? No. No. Wrong guy. No, other, that's the other, the first Punisher. Oh, the first Punisher. Oh, 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 I see, I see. I was like, like looking at you like, no, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's also in The Walking Dead. <laughs> I was thinking of Netflix Punisher. 
Oh, they don't even have it on here yet. Uh, it's it's like alien. It's it's got an alien feel to it. It's in hmm. space. Uh, it's, it's Bruce Willis, you say? I'm sure it's Bruce Willis. Cool. I could be wrong. Let me double check. <laughs> huh. I, I swear it was Bruce Willis. I could be wrong. I'm sure it was him. Uh, cool. I um. Well, Freaky's coming out on Friday. Oh yes. Yeah, and that looks fun. That one looks really cool. I yeah, we unfortunately had um a COVID scare at the movie theater here that I like, so probably won't be going to see it. But um, hopefully they release it on you know streaming services or DVD or rent to buy or something yeah. soon, and then we can see it. Thomas J. That's who's in this movie too. Hmm. I'm trying to remember what it's called because I'm pulling a big old blank. Oh. And if I look too closely, it'll like on YouTube, it'll start playing, and then I have to. Edit that out. And I'm lazy. So <laughs> And it's supposed to be a spooky scary? Yeah. It's like a sci fi ah, horror. Like a sci fi thriller thing. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um what else did I watch? Oh, I watched American Psycho. I was telling you about that. With Christian um Bales. Yeah. Fuck, that was good. I remember when oh. I came out, everyone was all about that movie. That was one, it, it's one of the best horror movies I've watched so far, I think. Yeah. Like, just um, uh, directing-wise, amazing. Really, really, really good. Yeah, I was impressed. I'm trying to think what else. I've watched so many. <laughs> um, I don't know if I told you about it already. 1922 I watched. Was that the one I watched? No, no, In the Tall Weeds. In the Tall Grass. Oh. Yeah, that was a good one, too. Jeez, yeah. I feel like these are all ones. And there's some of them where I'm like, I should add this to our list. And then some of them where it's like, why is this a cult classic? Like Suspiria I tried watching. It was too much. Too much for you? Yeah, and I usually like Dario Argento movies. But it just was too much. Too much for me. Mm. Yeah, I tried. Well, I, I heard tried. the new one was amazing. So I was like, oh, well, I'll watch the old one first and kind of get the feel for it. Nope. Nope. No. It wasn't for me. Bummer. I cannot find this stupid movie name. And this is Breach. It's called Breach. Found it. Breach. Breach. Ah. Yeah, it's got Bruce Willis, uh, Thomas Jane, all them. It's it's kind of like Alien. You know, there's an alien infecting the people in the ship and they got to find out what it is. And it looks not bad. Cool. Kind of like The Thing-ish? Yeah, that's a better... Yeah, The Thing. It's like The Thing cool. in space. Almost. Cool. You know, we, it's, we just got a huge dump of snow here in Saskatchewan because winter. And whenever we get, like, huge dumps of snow, I always think of The Thing. That's it, yeah. Right? I agree. It's just, like, because it's whatever, set in super snowy place and I forget already. Antarctica? Yes, that place. And it, it's just, like, every time it snows a bunch, I'm like... Hmm. And then I look at Ichabod and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Executive producer or alien entity trying to copy and take over the world. I ask the question every day. As would I. <laughs> Especially when she gives us that look and, you know, her face kind of peels back and her skull falls off and tentacles yeah. pop out. I hate when she does that. Yeah, I know. You'd think it would be a red flag, but it's just like, oh, she's hungry. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Or she's like, you know, why aren't you in the podcast? Do the podcast. Yeah. Hurry why up. aren't you working, Mom? God. Yeah, like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Get a and, job then. And also sad news from last weekend. Yes. Last week. Um, uh, from Canada. Um, Alex Trebek passed you. away. That's right. Yes. And so did Sean Connery. Like, what the heck? This 2020. The worst year ever. Calm if, the if, fuck down. If any years be a horror movie, it is 2020. Yes. No one uh, is safe. Yes. I was watching. Except Betty White. <laughs> she will survive. Her and um, oh, the Rolling Stones guy. Um, I'm sucking with names today. <laughs> uh, Brain somewhere else. And I'm it, the one that's been drinking beer. Yeah. What the heck? You know, I was from shoveling snow. I'm tired. <laughs> but uh, she's going she's gonna to live this all. That's a given. Betty White. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's going to be the final girl. I of, agree. Of humanity. Yeah, I was watching TikToks the other day, and obviously, because what else do I do with my time? And it was like angel, angel, an angel and God having a conversation, and God's like, oh, okay, well, did you slot out all those um, uh, tragedies for the 2020s? And the angel looked at him, and he was like, 
2020. And God <laughs> looked back. He's like, 2020s. And the angel looks back at him with tears streaming down his face. He's like, 2020. Because, <laughs> oh, like, for real, like, 2020 needs to chill. I was talking to my parents about the weather because we've got dumped with snow. It's super bad. Like, super bad snow. And I was like, Ugh, you know, like, just winter. Grr, grr. And they were like, yeah, it's going to actually be a really rough winter. Like, it's going to be very snowy and very cold. And I'm like, of course it is. Because why the fuck wouldn't it be? This is 2020. Yep. (laughs) Yep. Like, January 2021 cannot come soon enough. Ugh. Have you heard of a movie called Frozen? Not not that Frozen. Let it go. No. Let it go. (laughs) No. I could find a new co-host soon. Um, no, no, it's a horse in 2010 called Frozen. It's based, it's based uh, about uh, this these couple of people who get stuck in a chairlift. Yes. Oh, of course. And, yeah. And it becomes nighttime and they're like, well, we're stuck in here. We're freezing cold. What do we do? And it's a good, I like the premise. I never saw it. I think it was on Netflix years ago. It's still on Prime, I think. It's on my list on something, either Shutter or Prime or maybe Netflix. I'll try to <gasps> run Excuse me. Yeah. Just because, like, again, you talk about how winter reminds you of yes, the uh, thing. The thing. I think of Frozen. Yes. Because it's in the winter and it's a brutal movie. Like, it's... and you'd think getting stuck in a chairlift would not be a scary thing, but it is creepy. Well, like, it's... it's a good movie. You said you haven't seen it. I haven't yet. It is on Prime. You're right. Yes. It is on Prime. <laughs> but uh, I haven't seen it yet. No, I've I've heard about it. I've yes. need to watch it. Never got around to it. I mean, we should add it to the list because we at should. this point we're in next December already for next year. That's so. right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I went a little crazy because I've been watching so many horror movies. And I'm right. like, wait, I need to watch this one with Nick. We need to do this for the podcast. Well, we will. Of course we will. Yeah. There's, there's so many great, so good. so many good ones. And bad ones. But we'll watch oh. them all. Oh my God. I we have to talk about all. this one. What is it? We're still in the beginning of November. Okay. So I watched this one on Shudder and it was called Hack-O-Lantern. It was so bad. Like it was. Yes. Yes. Horrible. Uh, It was like. Basically like there's a scene where like this teenager is in a club and a woman is singing and he's fighting off demons with his like singing vocal cords and a guitar that shoots laser beams yeah what yeah that's crazy and then like it was just bizarre and i was watching it and i'm like there's no way that this movie like actually exists like that there isn't there's no way you think if it was it would end up on um like Mystery Science Theater. Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's what I was thinking, yeah. I always think of like Mystery Science Theater or Elvira, like the 13 Nights of Elvira or whatever. You know what? That's I'll, a good I'll one. take your, uh, your Hackle Lantern, uh-huh. Hackley, wherever it is, and I'll raise you a movie called Jack Frost. I've heard that that one's not bad. Really? No. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No. It, it's, it's got the same idea as you know, the Jack Frost with Michael Keaton. Sure. But instead of becoming this nice, jolly snowman, he becomes a killer snowman. Yeah, I've heard of it. And kills people. Oh. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's rough. It's, it's watchable. Okay. But it's rough. See, and this one was watchable too. Yeah. And it was just kind of like, got to the point where it's like, okay, like I kind of, like it literally starts out with the grandpa being the leader of a cult and recruiting the kids. And that's just literally where it yeah. starts. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then the kids grow up and they're like, cult stuff. And it's like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and the mom's like, no cult stuff. And they're like, mom, we're old enough to do cult stuff. And I was like, the what the stuff. fuck am I watching? <laughs> like, this isn't real. <laughs> and the acting is like, bad. They have... <sighs> oh, it should be then on... Mystery Science Theater. It has to. Right. We'll have to make a, we'll write a letter. Yeah. A plea. <laughs> Dear Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> or who, uh, I think, well, I don't think it got canceled by Netflix. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it sad. did. I know. Because I love um, Felicia. Um, 
oh, what's her name from Doctor Who and the Guild? The one who plays the the yeah, evil lady. Yeah, yes. Yeah. She's like one of my favorite actresses of all time. And uh, I follow her on Instagram. She's so funny. But she did <laughs> such a good job. Ugh. She did. I know. It's so good. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of so good, should we get into Grandma's Boy finally? I think it's time to get into Grandma's Boy. I'm so ready to talk about it. Yep. Yeah. I want you to take the Frankenstein shit, the deer shit, the green monster, the bling, and the bling bling. And I want you to roll it all into one joint. No one's ever been brave enough to try that. One man is. Roll it. I'll smoke it with you, bro. We'll go to the loony bin together. I don't give a fuck. All right. So like we said, this week we watched Grandma's Boy. It is a 2006 movie directed by Nicholas Goosen. That's a good last name. And written by Barry Wernick, Alan Covert, who's the main character, and Nick Swarston. Yeah. Woo! Allie, do I have any antlers on my head? (laughs) I'm going to walk like Frankenstein. (laughs) Eat food. (laughs) Eat ice cream sandwiches with turkey and lettuce. Yes. Oh, my God. There's just so many funny parts to this movie. Uh, This is a good stoner (sighs) comedy. You know? And I remember the reason I actually went to see it was because the the grandma, like his grandma, plays um, the mom and everybody loves Raymond, yes. which was one of my favorite shows. Ever. Everyone loved her. She was the best part of the she show. She was, yes. And uh, and Brad Garrett, I mean, also, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> but um, oh, she's just so fantastic. Like, how did they ever get her to to be in this movie? I don't like, know. You know, but it, it but it works for her. Like she's very so good, she's so she, innocent. She's badass. Yeah, she's bad, but she's also very innocent. Yes. and yeah, it's it's and her but role she's is like good. so clueless. You know, like she's literally that sweet old grandma. She is, but she also she's conniving enough to, you know, could you some some chores and do this and that. Yes, and and he does it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I also think he was living rent-free in her house, so, you know. Yeah, I think he was, too. Yeah. That's fair. Right? That's what I think, anyways. Yeah. But it was oh, such a good movie. I can't believe it's going to be 15 years old. Wow. <sighs> like, so that good. means that people in, like, what is it now, 2020? People born in 2004 can drive. Yep. What? I don't know. It's time. Time sucks. Oh, I was watching videos of this girl on TikTok and she was like, like literally looked like my age. I'm like, oh, you know, swing screen going through and through and through or whatever. And she was talking videos. She's like, yeah, you know, like being a 19 year old woman. And I was like, whoa, (laughs) whoa. And like, I don't think, but she's like a decade younger than me. Jeez. Like everybody needs to stop aging. (laughs) Just stop. I guess, I don't know if I need to act more like an adult or just regress. <laughs> oh. So where did you first hear this movie? We saw you say saw it in theaters, but. Yes, I, I kind of vaguely remember seeing trailers for it and being like, oh, this would kind of be fun. And I was a teenager when it came out, so it was one of those like, you know, kind of raunchy videos that you want to go see, right? Yeah. So... Like, I'm sure I went to see it in theaters. What was this, 2006? So I would have been almost graduating high school. Yep. So, yeah, it was uh, it was one of those, like, ooh, let's go see it. We're so bad. Well, it came after American Pie, which yes. kind of reinvigorated the, the teen yes. comedy. Uh, raunchy. Raunchy, yes. Yes. Yes, it really did. You know, like, originally it was Porky's. Mm-hmm. Porky's mm-hmm. was kind of the stepping mm-hmm. stone. Mm-hmm. But, uh... Fuck, I haven't seen that movie in forever. Yeah. And what that's... about Boogie Nights? Have you seen Boogie Nights? I watched some of it. Fuck, it was good. Mm-hmm. It was really depressing. It was good. <laughs> that's what I think of when I think of raunchy movies. Is mo- I mean, obviously, yeah. it was a movie about a porn star. But, yeah, like the American Pie and that kind of stuff. But I think it's sort of also like um, horror movies are very... Can be raunchy in a way. Just oh, because yeah. they use sex to sell because horror wasn't a huge selling genre like yeah. it was hard to get into major theaters 
And it was always geared towards adults, so they threw in more adult things. for of course. Throw in the boobs, throw in the, the nudie, the sex. Yeah, if you're going to get an R rating anyways, you may as well, like, yeah, you can't work just, for it. Can't just all for language. you got to throw in, you know, a nice pair of tits or yeah. something like that. Throw so. in some boobs and some yeah. fucks and just call her a movie. There you go. <laughs> and then, then plots after. That's, that's, we'll think of something as we shoot. Right. So... <laughs> And how did you hear about this movie? Uh, I, remember, I remember seeing trailers for it. Yes. I never got to see in the theaters. But when it came to DVD, I was like, oh, this looks funny. I want to watch it. So I rented it. And I loved it. Right. Every time I first watched it, I was busting it, got laughing. Oh, um, so good. Even when we just watched it, we were both yeah. like laughing the whole time. And it's been like a stoner comedy. I'm like, no, I was going to... You know, get high next time and watch it, which I'll probably will next time I watch this movie, I'll get high and watch it, but oh my Oh, we messed God. up. We should have done that. We totally should have. Damn. 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 I was like, it's not even, it's too late for us to pause and come back. <laughs> <laughs> Takes too long for that shit to kick in. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> next time. Get. Next time. Next time. Yeah. Ne- the next turn of comedy, we will watch a record high. Deal. And that's going to be a shit show. Oh, my God. <laughs> We're, it, it's not even going to record. We're going to have, like, an empty laptop just sitting here, just a blacked-out laptop. <laughs> this is the best episode ever. <laughs> We're recording it? I don't know, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> like we come to I don't know why we turned into Cheech and Chong. I was just saying, no, <laughs> when it comes to starter comedy, though, you cannot beat... Cheech and Chong movies. Right. That is like the epitome of stoner comedies. Oh. And I think Trailer Park Boys is right below them. Right there. You know, even though it's not about like stoners, I always think like stoner movies too, like Jay and Silent Bob. Like they're just so easy. Like they're not stoners, but they're just like the comedy oh, yeah. is well, so yeah. like... <laughs> like I think the they're actually stoners, but... I believe um, it. Then there's movies that you think they're stoners like Bill and Ted. They even came and said, no, they're not high or druggies. They just, they're just really... Yes. He's got the, the lingo, the, um, uh, gosh, there's a term for it, for valley speak. They yes. have a valley speak down pat. We should do Bill and Ted for our next fake orgasm month, like a year from now. Yeah, next right? year we're definitely throwing in Bill and Ted. We have fu- to. Future, future Alan and Nick add Bill and Ted. Yeah. I added Charlie's Angels to next year. I actually remembered. I was laying oh, in bed job. listening to it and I was like, Oh shit! I didn't add Charlie's <laughs> Angels, and I like went into our Google Doc, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> oh, this is a fun month. I love this I movie. I love this. This is fun. Let's go through the cast. Perfect. This is got a good cast. It's so, such a good cast. It's a Billy Madison movie or Billy, Happy Madison, whatever. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So cast. Uh, the movie stars Alan Covert as mm-hmm, Alex, mm-hmm. main character. Linda Cardellini as Samantha. Samantha. You will be mine. <laughs> Sit on my face. <laughs> <laughs> pew, 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 pew. Um, Nick uh, Swarzen is <gasps> Jeff. Doris Roberts as Grandma Lily. Yes. Love Doris. Uh, Shirley Jones as Grace. Oh my God, yes. Grace She's was so good. Silver Fox. Oh. Love it. Shirley Knight as B. B. Oh my god. I think yeah, she plays funny. like the uh, the in a few has been a few Adam Sandler movies too. I think she was the uh, the crazy woman who jumped out of the I'm on top of the car in Happy Gilmore. Oh. I'm sure she is. Oh. I think it is. I have the great Peter Dante as Dante. Yes. Uh, Joel Moore as J P. And he so good. he went on to do Avatar. Like he had a good career after yes. this. He actually, he, you know, money's not an issue for him. <laughs> uh, Kevin Nealon as Mr. Simon Cheezel. Oh my God, Mr. Cheezel. Yeah. He was good. He's such a good actor. That guy. Yes, he is. He's in a lot of Adam Sandler yeah. movies too, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. he was part of that crew. Yeah. Um, Jonah Hill as Barry. Jonah Hill. You know, he went on Everybody to have a pretty good career. Hill, yeah. Kelvin Yu as Kane, and he was in um, Too Fast, Too Furious. Interesting. Yeah, so he went on. Okay. Like, even in the car, like that's similar to the car he had in the movie. Fun. And who else can I throw out there? Um, oh, stupid name. Um, not his, not his name is bad, but just it's hard to pronounce. Abdulie oh, Mgon yes. as Doctor Shakalu. Yep. Shik Shakalu, whatever. Dr. Shaco. Dr. Shaco. 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 I can't do it. Yeah, he was 
He was amazing. Yeah. He was one of the best parts of this movie, I think. Because he's just, like, so serious. He speaks, like, a bajillion languages. Like, oh, so good. And we have Kevin Nash as mover number two at the beginning. Oh, yes. Right, 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 right. That's the wrestler guy? Yeah. Yes. And also we got Rob Schneider as the uh, landlord who kicks him out at the beginning. Yes. And David Spade, uh, David Spade as the, as the uh, vegan restaurant waiter. Yes. <laughs> that was good. Yep. Yep. That's. Jeez. I like, oh, they're just, it was just great cast. Yes. Good, funny, funny comedian to act and roll, like uh, act and roles. It was just great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great choices. Great. Yeah. Dante was just basically himself through the whole movie. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't remember him in anything else. This is like the only, I know, I know he's in other movies, but yeah. like this is the role I always think of. Yeah, this, uh, he was the quarterback on Waterboy. Oh, okay. Jeez, I haven't seen that movie in a long, and long time. I forget what else he's in. He's in a few other ones. Sure. Yeah. Oh, what a good cast. Yeah, really I was is. saying the only I um the girl who plays Samantha, it's just some of the scenes she's in is just like especially the drunk scene I find is like really hard to watch. Like I don't know if she's like doesn't drink in real life, but it's just like really weird. And like not to not like cringy weird. I mean cringy weird too, but it's just like no, stop. I'm just going to sing. It's like <laughs> okay. Like that's, <laughs> but also there we get to the whole overacting. Of topic course, again. and that's and what I works. mean. It's like I don't know if she doesn't drink in real life, but like, <laughs> it's just like weird. Uh, I don't know. Just there's a couple of the scenes where it's like, like most of the movie she's not bad, but some of the scenes where she's acting is just like, I don't know. Just it it it's weird. Like just her. Her voice, how yeah. she no, acts it, it out is it. weird. Yeah. I don't know why it bugs me. It just does. Especially just re-watching it after watching so many movies lately. It's just like, eh. But, yeah. fuck, the guy who plays Jeff, though, that Nick Swarsden or whatever. I He's funny. He is. He really is. Oh, you know who he reminds me of? His banter is um the same banter as um the guys in, um uh, what's it called? It. Or it too, like oh yes, uh, Eddie and yeah, that was mean. And yeah, and Bill Hader, whatever his yeah. character is, I forget. That that banter is hilarious. I watched a girl on TikTok do the whole like Chinese table scene when they're bantering back and forth. Oh, I die every time, and I'm like, that's the kind of banter it is, where you're just like making fun of each other. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, the humor in this is hilarious. It is, and even like when um. Uh, Alex goes to stay with Jeff at first, you know, because he has no place yes. to stay. And he's showing off you know, his race car bed, and he starts going on. We go, my parents might give you some rims, get a CB radio, maybe a car stereo. Um, Alex had to, like, the actor had to actually tell him to shut up. Really? Just enough. Like, that's just stop. <laughs> <laughs> enough. I've had enough. Let's get through the kids' scene. Because <laughs> he was just, like, talking too much, or it was. He was, was ad libbing. He was ad libbing oh, the whole my thing. God, that's. So funny. And, and when uh, they're smoking with, uh, I think at the party, yeah. uh, Peter Dante, he, they give him fake weed. He's like, well, pff, no, f- fuck this kid. I'm getting some real shit. And he, every take, he would do it, you know, roll, roll, not roll, roll, roll. He would uh, pack his bong, do yeah. some hits, oh, retake. And at the time, he's like, I can't feel my legs, kid. You got to take me to the hospital. <laughs> Nick Sorian said about that, which is so funny. Oh, that's good. Oh. And I, I do, I, I just, I love Peter Dunn. He's not been in many roles, but the ones he really stars in, he kills. He's always the same character. Yes. But that character is money and, and funny. And memorable. Yes. You know, when I think of this movie, I always think of the grandmas and Dante. Yeah. Because he's, like, the best part. He really is. He really is. It's like, hey, as, I called... As good, yeah. and, and as good as JP, which we love to mock oh, and make fun of his acting. So good. And the robot thing. Dante, I think, is just a little bit above. Just because he's so... They're good. both such polar opposite characters. Yes, I think that's why both of them are so good. Is that JP is, like, 
so like micromanaging, you know, pumps himself up, you know, needs constant approval and telling him that he's amazing and, you know, completely White House, like everything I am is a white. Genius. Yes. Like, yeah, you always... And Dante is like so chill. So like, chill. Like never talks about himself. His like house is full of knickknacks and garbage and like I love animals. His house, yeah. And <laughs> yes, animals. Right? So there's two completely polar opposite characters and I love that. Yeah. I love that contrast. It's hilarious. Oh fuck this movie. It's good. <laughs> it's so good. It's good. It just puts a smile on my face. Let's <laughs> we get into the plot? Yes. Okay. So Oh, that's a movie. So Alex, Alan Covert, is a single 35-year-old video game tester who lives with his friend Josh, who's mm -hmm. played by Jonathan Loren. I forgot to mention his name. Right, right, right. Uh, he's the guy, he's the, uh, the crazy eye kind of guy in Adam Sandler movies. Yes. The, the quarter, not the quarter, the, um, the blocker, I think, with the, you know, the funky eye. Yeah. He's, he's part of the group. Yes. He's part, he's part of the Adam Sandler oh, yeah. crew. When Josh wastes all the rent money on Filipino hookers, yes. their landlord, Yuri, Rob Schneider, evicts them, and Alex has to find a new place to live. Mm -hmm. Alex tries to stay with his marijuana dealer, Dante, but cannot do so because Dante is adopting a wild lion to live in the <laughs> house. <laughs> and he has to go, you know, you can just get a dog. Yeah, I can't. But with a dog, you can kind of, you know, just whatever. Well, if you're just a lion... You're not gonna. You're gonna stay the fuck away. <laughs> yes, exactly. And he also makes a joke that you. like, you know, I don't usually mix business and pleasure. You know, like this is my home office and points is like, like, like they're in the basement. Table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alex spends one night with his coworker Jeff. Oh yeah. <laughs> but Jeff still lives with his parents. Yes, his roommates. Nick. Oh, sorry, his roommates. His roommates. Yes. <laughs> they all just played. After embarrassing encounter with Jeff's mom. Oh, embarrassing encounter. That's all they give you? He, he couldn't, uh, Alex couldn't sleep, so he grabbed uh, one of Jeff's Barbies. Yeah. Uh, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. Yeah, Lord the Croft Lord Barbie, Croft, yeah. And went to masturbate in the bathroom and was just on the verge of concluding uh. when... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to conclude <laughs> when uh, Jeff's mom kind of walks in. Thing is, it's Jeff, and yes. he just blows his load all over his. Oh yeah, all over. Her. You oh don't see anything, God. but it's heavily insinuated. As oh. he keeps saying, "I can't stop coming. It feels so good." Yeah, um, and uh, then when he's leaving, Jeff says, "I can't believe you came on my mom." <laughs> <laughs> Shut up about it. <laughs> um, oh. After his encounter, uh, in which he is caught masturbating in the bathroom and subsequently ejaculates on her, Alex is forced to move in with his grandmother, Lily. Yes. And her two eccentric friends, well, one's eccentric. Yes. B and Grace. <laughs> and, and this is a funny, his first night there, he's laying in bed, you know, trying to get some sleep. He hears like some creaking. Yes. And here's this, you know, because there's a previous roommate. Um, Named Sophie. Sophie, who had. passed yeah. away. And uh, the grandma's under, like, the bed, making all these weird, you know, oh, I'm dead on the floor. No one came <laughs> to save me. You killed me, Alex. <laughs> he's like, oh, fucking shit. And she pops up, ah, and he's like, oh, jeez, grandma, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just having some fun, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we were going to have fun together. <laughs> Don't curse. It's not, you're above that. <laughs> and she just walks out. He's like, holy fuck. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good little scene. It, it it's shows so that good. His grandma is... is, is very goofy and, and likes to have fun. Yeah, exactly. And also, um, Grace thinks he's gay. Yeah. Or oh, jokes, yeah, or yeah, jokes yeah. and kind of, yo. Yeah, how know, old are you? Uh, 36. 30. And he, she's like, oh, okay. I have a gay nephew. I'll give you his number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're single? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Alex has given many chores and fixed up projects to do around the house, but has a hard time completing them because his grandmother and her friends are a constant distraction. Mm -hmm. He also finds it hard to get any work done. Alex discovers that the three women have a fascination with the television show Antiques Roadshow and is later able to get some work finished by giving them tickets to attend the taping of the show. Wow, that just jumped ahead. Of the I was plot. like, oh my god, we didn't talk about his job. Yeah. We didn't talk about yeah. Sam starting. Again, Wikipedia. Uh, right. That's At work, fair. Alex meets the attractive Samantha, Linda Cardellini, mm -hmm. Cardellini, 
who has been sent by the company's corporate office to oversee the production of a new video game. Um, oh, what's it called again? Um, Eternal Death, Death Slayer, Slayer 3. 3. Yes. Yeah. Which is, JP's, like, he's the one who made the first one when he was like 13 or 14. Yeah. Made millions of dollars, is working on the new one. And he's having a, well, he, he's made, they're doing this one. Yeah. And he's made, and they want to get this one finished and done so they can work on his new game he's working on right now. Exactly. Which is falling apart. He's not having good luck with that. No. But, so we got some out there to kind of, kind of keep, it gives crunch time. Yeah, she must be like fun. from corporate in quotations. Yes, like she's there to get things, get the ball rolling. Yes, exactly. She's like, um, keep them on schedule yes. and stuff. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, this is reaching, but uh, Return of the Jedi. Yeah. When Vader comes and tells him, yeah, you know, just so you know, Emperor's coming. Yeah. And to the guy's like, I need more men. You, know, you can tell it to the Emperor when he shows up. Emperor's coming here. We shall double our efforts. He's like, no yes, shit. Yes, exactly. So. Nice Star Wars reference, by the way. Oh, thank you. Proud of you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Star Wars is kind of awesome. Woohoo. Uh, and a little complete side note here. Yes. Uh, Beer and Chill, their latest episode was about Star, Star Wars, Wars. Uh, canon, the new movies. Yep. And against the old. Um, extended universe. Yes. Which I I, I prefer the extended universe, but awesome. I, I wish I was on an episode. I wish I wish I wish. Ooh. Right. <laughs> it was Let a good you. episode. I know. Oh. Well, they should. I know. I'm like me. I want to talk about Star Wars now. <laughs> maybe too. Oh well. Maybe next time we'll try and sneak on their podcast. Deal. Again. Deal. 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 Okay. Um, Alex and Samantha hit it off, but the only person in the way of their friendship is the creator of the game they are working on, JP. Joel Moore, a self-proclaimed genius who is Jane. obsessed with video games and has a crush on Samantha. Oh, that's along what we're with, calling it, is a crush? Along with everyone else in the, basically the whole company. Right. Samantha is not interested in JP and declines his constant advances, which are cringeworthy. He calls her oh. my lady. It's and like... <sighs> He's like a modern day fedora wear, basically. Yes, chin, chin, or neck Not beard. that there's anything wrong with that, but like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. like, you have to be socially aware. And he of is like, the opposite of socially. And exactly. And like, you know, if a girl turns you down, maybe just let it go. You know, don't like keep going after her because that's yeah. creepy and not endearing. Nope. Although I'm sure if you eh. have robot legs, that would help. That's true. No. That's true. Which what JP wants. <laughs> Meanwhile, in an attempt to sound cool to his younger co workers, Jonah Hill and Kevin Yu, Alex says that he's living with three hot babes. Yes. Alex's friends believe the lie and actually think the reason he is so tired every day at work is because he is living with three women who constantly wear him out in the bedroom. Yes. Oh, I say the same so thing. funny. I would say the same thing. Right. Who wouldn't? Like, you know, I'm living with grandma and her two friends. Tell guys at work, oh yeah, I'm with three, shocking up with three hot chicks. They're all about watching porn and tying me up. It's yes. Which is, like, what he says, like, he burns his hands one night when he, like, gets too high and then goes home and cooks food and pulls the pan out of the oven without mitts. Ugh. Ouch. And so he comes to work the next day and he's like, oh, you know, check it out, like, what my roommates did. And they're like, bro. It's just gnarly. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. The real cause of his fatigue is because he stays up late at night working on his own video game called yes. Demonic. Demonic. Which he has been developing in secret for some time. Lily asks about the game one night and he teaches her to play it. Oh, yeah, and, and she's fun. like a whiz at it. Yeah, she's like, Oh, I, you know, is this a bad guy? Yeah, he's a drug dealer. You, you kill him. Oh, I don't like violence, but drugs are bad. Yeah, but, like, but drugs are bad. <laughs> Take that, you dirty doper. <laughs> and I'm thinking, <laughs> Alex does, well, he doesn't do the hard drugs, but he's all about the weeb or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's very minor. Oh, it's so funny. Uh, to his surprise, she becomes quite good and beats many levels. After Alex and his co-workers finish successfully testing Eternal Sl Death Slayer 3, their boss, Mr. Cheezle, tells Samantha to take the boys out to eat at a vegan restaurant. But they instead make fun of the restaurant and their waiter, David Spade. Yes. When they arrive. And then leave to a burger shop. As you do. Yeah. So, like, so to really get things finished, she has, uh, she, the three main, or four main guys... 
different levels to go through and go through all the bugs and complete. Yes. And how to they're fix game them. testers. Exactly. Yes. And you know, Alex, he's like trying to get the work done, but his he gets um free cable. Like, this is old school, your know, black box from yes. Dante. And he sets it up for um his grandma and her, her roommates. And they're stuck watching the Food Channel and the Antique Road Show. And um which nothing wrong with Antique Road oh, Show. No. It's one of my favorite no, no, shows no. ever. And he then he can't use the TV then to finish his do his work. So he's like screwed for the last two, two days. Yes. He manages though to get some tickets so they're gone so he can get the job done. And on like you know the last day, all done. Exactly. And because he did such a good job, they uh, took him out. You know, they got to take him out. Right. Also during this, you got. JP kind of just stalking around and you see him working on his um his game and just being JP, being weird. Yes. Uh Kevin Yu's character walks in to uh you know give him a suggestion about hey, you should because these two enemies look similar, we should maybe change them. He's like, Well we can't, it's too late in the production. He's like, No, 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 just change colors. He's like, Whatever. And then he goes, takes the idea, makes up his own. And tells Samantha. Samantha, yes. And she's like, oh, that's a great idea. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm a genius. Yeah. And kind of a prodigy, so. Exactly. Like, <laughs> so he, it, it kind of, it's it's a little bit of uh, foreshadowing to just how lame and just yes. a jerk JP is. Exactly. That like, you know, maybe he's, his 15 minutes is over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When Jeff has to use the bathroom and refuses to use the one in the restaurant, it's only to go piss in the alley. Alex is forced <laughs> to take everyone to his house. Yes. Yeah. Alex comes home to find that Lily, Grace, and B drink all of his pot, which they thought was tea. Yes. He's tea. He hid his stash in uh, Sophie's old like tin can, and they were going through everything to try and uh, sell at the roadshow, and they yes. came across this. They thought it was her tea. And which, like, how could they drink that? That would taste terrible. That would taste so bad. Ugh. They're old, I guess. That's, That's true. That's fair. When Samantha admits to smoking weed too, Alex goes up Dante and throws a wild party. This is a this sweet is so party. so good. During the party, the group prank calls JP and leaves him a voicemail that makes fun of him about wanting to be a robot. Which he does <laughs> which all Which he time. does! But he even tells Samantha at one point that he now, wants robot, robot legs. robot legs. It's a risky <laughs> operation, but... I think, I think it'll be it'll, sweet. Yeah, I think it'll be sweet. I think it'll be worth it. It's like, what? <laughs> or when um, uh, Kevin Hughes' character comes in with the uh, suggestion, he's just booming techno music loud. Oh my loud. god, this is funny. He's like, does this music scare you? He's like, no, it's not like techno. He's like, you would if you had robot ears. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> you would if you had, had robot, robot ears. ears. Oof. And, and he likes to do the old like robot motions while making the sounds of like hydraulics. Hydraulics, like, yes. Doo, 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 doo. Like it's so, like they're committed hard to the yes. character, and he uh, killed it. It's so funny. It's like, but it's like funny in a cringy way. Yes. Ugh. Yes, it is. Yuck. Um, <laughs> JP is upset by the message and shows up at Lily's house a couple nights later in tears. Um, I think it was him. This was this was fake. This is him just trying to suck up and get information and get in yeah, with he, Sam. And exactly. Stuff. And then he stumbled across Alex's game, Demonic. Yes. Uh, feeling bad for him, Alex agrees to let him borrow his only copy of Demonic and test it out for a few days. Because he's like a prodigy, so he could, yeah. you know, he's like, oh, you know, I'll give you pointers, and you know, this is what real friends would do, right? And Alex is like, yeah, actually, that would be great. Yeah. Because this guy literally develops games for a living, right? And yeah. Alex is just a tester. So he's thinking, man, you know, I'd get some good feedback. And, and, he's, and he's so impressed by the work, too. Like, you know, how... Exactly. The bit mapping is so smooth. And, yeah, and like, wow. And how long have you been doing this? Oh, three years. I'm just like a 35-year-old prodigy. He's like, yeah, <laughs> eh, no, <laughs> no, no. And I was going to go back to the party because the party part, the scene is just awesome. Yes. He's got all the characters. He got all these new ones that Dante brings up, plus Dante, plus uh, the Dr. Shalaku, I forgot his name. Yes, right? yes, yes. And um, they're, they're smoking all the weed, all the different types of weed. Uh, Bee's giving out all her, her medication to everyone. Oh, yes. Um, 
Um, Lily's making sandwiches. Lily's making yo know, food, like like you know what, like your grandma would. Like yes. she's making food for everybody in bowls of cereal and 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 Grace goes and hooks up with Jeff. Jeff, yes. Jeff is talking to her and she's you know, kind of talking about how she gave um, um, Charlie Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin yeah. a hand job. She slept with uh, Albert and Costello. Yep. And they end up hooking up and. Yeah. Uh, Jordan Hill's character gets stuck on his first boob for 13 hours. Yep. Uh, it's it's a wild party. It's hilarious. And it yeah. ends with, you know, uh, well, not end with, but uh, end up eventually Alex, Alex, Dante, and Samantha doing tequila shots. Yep. And after Alex beats uh, Samantha at a, a fighting game, she's like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll drink ya. And so she takes two shots and shows her just smash, and then you're like, oh, her acting's kind of dumb. Yeah. And she starts singing. She yes. just kind of just sluts it out. Yeah. And as she falls over, Alex jumps out, I fucking love this woman. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then after, though, in the morning. Yes. I think this is the most heartwarming scene in this so entire sweet. movie, which is, it works so well. Um, Alex wakes up on a counter and goes and sees Lily and Samantha going through old baby pictures of Alex. Yeah. And he sits down and uh, Lily kind of explains how she's glad to have Alex in the house because that reminds her of her late husband, husband. who died like 10 months ago. 10 years. Oh, yeah. months. It was 10 years this month, she said. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Aww, and, so uh, and And this is a great, this is a really good scene with her and Alex where he's like, I loved him and I love you. Yeah. And and it it's a really heartwarming scene. I'm like, this is really good. It's sweet because for it's, being you know, such a big comedy, for being a stoner, goofy, little raunchy comedy, they threw in this nice bit of, of heart yeah. and love and warmth. I'm like, nice. And it's just like, oh, I wanna hug my grandparents now. No, I know. Yeah. And and it also shows you know, Samantha and Lily are bonding. Yeah. And as you know, she asked Lily asked not Lily. Uh, Samantha asks Alex to ride home. As he gets up, him and his grandma have a little look, and he's like, you know, she yeah. shakes her head. He kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, pulls his hands together. She's like, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just nice. And he takes her back to her apartment, and they end up kissing, and like, oh, things are sparks are flying. Woo! But JP comes back, steals the game. Always. Or he takes the game. Yes. And tests it out. Uh, an irritation for Alex making his life miserable mm-hmm. and having become accustomed to stealing others' ideas. Yes. JP steals the game and tries to pass it off as his own at work. Dun, dun, dun. Because uh, also Alex makes a mistake of saying, I've told no one. I'm yeah. keeping hush hush. Don't tell anyone. Yes, exactly. Oops. Mr. Cheezel does not believe Alex when he insists the game is his since it was his only copy. So his friends call Lily to the office. Um, Alex blows up. He threatens to kick uh, JP's ass and yes. basically quits. Yes, exactly. Goes to Dante's and smokes a lot of weed. Yes, like they combine a bunch yes. of different strains yes. into one joint. And there's a monkey now. A monkey that and... knows Kung Fu or Taekwondo. Yep, yep. And it's funny. It's oh, really good. it's funny. So they go to try to find Alex and Samantha ends up going back to Lily's house and she's like, you know, um, you know, we just can't find Alex. And she's like, oh, well, why can't you find him? She's like, well, he kind of left work because, you know, there's this thing with this game. And she's, she's like, like, oh, oh demonic. demonic. And she's like, you know about it? And she's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm having a good time. You know, I'm on the final boss, but, you know, these zombies keep biting me or whatever. And she's like, <laughs> "That's right. you need to come with me. Yeah. <laughs> And and one of the things of the of the the company is they have game challenges. Yes. During the breaks, and we see a few times like they're playing this frog game. Uh, some guy challenges Jeff to Dance oh, Dance Revolution. DDR. It's cool. Yes. So, because she has mastered the game already, she plays against JP and wins to prove it belongs to Alex. Yes. Which is a good little redemption for. Oh. Not so much Lily, but just it shows that that she played the game and she yeah. knows how all the, all the ins and out of it. And exactly. JP's yeah. a jerk. He's a stealer. Yeah. And he wants Samantha to sit on his face. Oh, that's when he says that. It's yes. so awkward. And Mr. Cheezel's like, that is inappropriate. That's inappropriate. <laughs> In the end, 
JP is fired while Alex is vindicated and creates a, su- a successful game. Woohoo! Alex and Samantha start dating. Yeah. And yeah, it's the end. Movie ends with Movie them ends. at Dante's with an elephant. Yes. <laughs> yes, he's an elephant. Oh, it's so random and wonderful. Yeah. What a good movie. Just like one of those movies that I've put on in the background so many times before because you can just pop in and out of this movie anytime. And it's just so easy. Like there's always something kind of like weird going on. And it's oh, and always funny, you know. There's not a lot of backstory required no, other than they all work at a game, like a testing, whatever. Yeah, it's a, a game development like company. company. Yes, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, it's it's really funny. It is, um, yeah. It's, it's got some great humor. It's got some great scenes, heartwarming scenes. Yes. Um, the actors killed it. Yes. Uh, and again, those who like, you know, the whole... Um, you know, the weed and all that. Yeah. It's a funny, you know, stoner comedy. It is. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was good. It, but even, like, when it came out, obviously, I was in high school and, like, developing my brain so I didn't do drugs. But it was, like, even back then, I appreciated it. Like, there was enough, like, gamer comedy, too. Oh, yeah. Where I could appreciate just a sense of humor sort of and like i guess like also being a girl who plays video games and stuff and is kind of in that nerdy world i can identify with samantha where it's just like you know being in that world kind of sort of and knowing guys like jp and knowing guys like alex and jeff well, and and you know what i mean alex like, makes a great comment to her so just so you know that you not because you're a girl but you're a uh, you know a hard as hell girl or yes woman. And you're swimming in a sea of versions. Yes. And she's like, thanks for the info and, and too much detail. <laughs> but that's true. Like, she, like she, she knocks play during the party. Yes. Uh, like, she said she, you know, instead of playing Barbie, she grew up being her brothers at Mario, or Super Mario Brothers. Yes. Like, she knows her shit around yeah, games. Yeah, absolutely. Which, which is a good job for her. Exactly. And I know now... It was always seen as, you know, guys, most of the gamers. Absolutely. Nowadays, it's guys and girls. It's There's, totally both. Everything has really switched. From when I was a kid, you know, it was all about the jocks and all that. You know, yep. guys play games, ooh, they're lame, they're stupid. Now it's all the way around. Absolutely, because those are the guys buying the Teslas and living in mansions yes. and stuff like that, right? And, and now there's like e games and esports and stuff like yes. it's huge. Yes. And you can make millions. Like there are. Like there. Ninja just like signed like a multi million dollar deal with that platform. Yep. And like like it was like thirty million or something. Like and now what? now with with Twitch being out. Yes. That is now given those who play the games for a living yes. a platform. Exactly. I know there's, there's a girl here in Saskatoon who does that. Yep. I forget her name because I don't watch Twitch very much. Yep. But um, like like the Game Grumps. Uh, yeah. PewDiePie. Yep. Um, some people have now become, it made it their, that's their living. That's their job. That is their profession. Yes. They play games for a living. They bring in people to watch and... Are, is it profitable? Absolutely. And not just esports. They do it just for the for the views. For people, yes. for people, you know, they they gift them with money, you know, for the Absolutely. content. Um, well, and I've been watching people stream games like since high school. I've been watching people stream. Yeah. And part of the reason that I started is because. Um, you know, games are expensive. Like, yes. they're, like, 90 bucks a game at this point. Who has $90 to spend on every freaking game out there? Yeah. So I follow a few different people that do Let's Plays on YouTube. And, like, even today I saw that Jack Septicai, he's playing um, the new Spider-Man, like, Miles Moranis game. And I'm like, well, I do not have a PS5, and I do not have the money to spend on a game right now, so I can watch somebody else play yes. it, where it's a linear, you know, sort of a gameplay, and you can just watch somebody else for free instead of spending $90 on a game. Yeah. Do you get the same feelings out of it? Probably not, but he's a pretty funny guy, and you know, you also and get that added commentary. That's right, and that's yes. what makes it work for them. If they can be funny enough, they can be entertaining enough. Yes. Game Grumps, PewDiePie, like, they wouldn't be yes. where they are if not for their... Ability to uh, talk and to 100%. entertain. Like with Dan and Aaron, I love watching them because they're funny. Yes. They make jokes. They joke. They have fun. Absolutely. Do yeah. I care that 
Aaron can, you know, he sometimes gets lost or doesn't know how to play the game at times. I don't care. Because yep. he makes fun of it. Dad makes a joke out of it. And they have fun. Exactly. And I, I in turn, I laugh and think, that's just goofy. It's fun to watch people have fun, right? Yeah. Like, that's just, it's, yeah. It's, I well, think of it, it's like acting almost, you know, yeah. like we enjoy watching movies and TV shows. It's 100%. just like acting. Yeah. Yeah. You're just watching commentary on something. Like, that's so a part of our world right now is it really commentary. Is. It really is. Yeah. And since we're talking about streaming and all that, should we, we were talking about this. Yeah. Should we, should we, should we drop a little bit of uh, a little future plans for, Maybe. for the Horgasm podcast? Do you Maybe. think we should? Should I we? I think we should. Okay, fine. I will. Uh, is, this goes out, uh, thanks to the guy at work I work with, uh, Joey. Um, I was you know, talking about the podcast and he's like, you know, why don't you, why don't you do the games? I'm like, I'd love to, I'd love to talk about the games, I'd love to do reviews of the games. Yes. But I have to play the games. Yes, exactly. I have a bunch of good horror games. There's, um. Dead Space. Thank you. I was just thinking that. Dead Space, Alien Isolation, Silent Hill, Resident Evil. Yes. There is a large collection of horror games out yes. there. Yes. It's not so much, it's it not so much, it's tough to do a podcast about it because there's so much to talk about. Absolutely. And a lot of that is visual. Like, yes. Like, for movies, people can go find a movie and watch what we're reviewing easy. Yep. Some people aren't gamers. People who listen to this may be not gamers. Right. I don't expect them to go out and buy Silent Hill 2 or... Play it all the way through. Play it all the way through. And then listen. And listen. Yes. That's that's a little bit too much for them. Right. So, thanks to Joey. Again, Joey, thank you. He threw the idea, why not start a Twitch account? Yeah. Why not play the games? Right. And as I play them on Twitch, I can review, talk, whatever. Right. So, we're not doing it yet. We're working on it. We're going to kind of work it out. Um, trying to get some more followers, you know, before we really step into this. Right, exactly. But we're planning in the next year. By next year. Should be yeah. next year, I think. We plan to start up a Twitch account. It'll be called, it's already out there, The Horgasm Podcast mm-hmm. on Twitch. Yeah. We plan to maybe twice a week. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure when because of my work schedule and right. your work schedule. We plan to play the games, horror games, and stream them and talk. Yeah. As we play them. Exactly. And have fun. Yeah. Because we're fun, right? Uh, well, I think we're fun. I think we're fun, Will too. this be on our <laughs> podcast? Maybe. Maybe we'll discuss during Talking Chop. Maybe not. Yeah. I don't, we haven't got that far yet. This is very, very alpha. Yeah. <laughs> alpha, <laughs> alpha beta. But yeah. um, just to, just, it'll, it'll help expand our, the Horgasm podcast Thing. thing. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> there's a term for it. I can't think of it now. But, uh, and it, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. I think it'll work. I think it'll be fun. It will be. And I got, like I said, lots of horror games. There's lots more to find. Uh, and yeah, that's Yay. that's kind of been the future plans for 2021 for Horrorgasm Podcast. Yeah. And this actually worked out very well to bring it into. Yeah. So, Branch yeah. out a bit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's worth, it's worth a try. I agree. Yeah. But back to the podcast. And back to Grandma's Boy. Yes. How would you rate this movie? Um. Oh, oh my God. I didn't even think of a rating. You know, probably like 3.5 at this point. Oh. And I think the reason 3.5 is like some of the jokes, obviously, because this was 15 years ago, didn't age as well in like 2020. But like very few. Like it's still overall, I think, a pretty solid, like, like, there's thoughtfulness behind the jokes and they're oh, yeah. still funny. You know what I yeah. mean? And like stoner comedies, I'll never go away. Like obviously like with Cheech and Chong, like they're still yeah. so relevant and especially with legalization and whatnot, cause Canada, you know, it's more like, you know, it doesn't feel as taboo anymore. Maybe. Um, yeah. Most of the humor is like really on par. Uh, some of it is a little dumb, but it's so few and far between, you know, yeah. but it's a, uh, it's such a fun movie such a fun movie it really yeah. is it's not like like this isn't like top tier acting really thoughtful plot like any of that kind of stuff but it's fun and yeah. for that it gets a 3.5 i agree i, I give the same, same rating 3.5 awesome um like the comedy is great yes uh, i love all the little video game hidden things in there some are made up some aren't yes uh like gay robot was fake well he was part of um sandler's one cd Sure. He did. I guess it was like a TV show too. Nick uh, Suarez and he he did something about that. Yeah. But um, 
actually look into it, you know, like the, the old Game Informer posters. He had Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid 3. Yes. Um, well, that was Big Boss, whatever. Um, it's it's fun. It's got it's got heart to it. Uh, again, JP killed it. You know, he's just a goofy so good. villain. Uh, uh, antagonist. Yeah. Uh, Alex. He's goofy. Uh, he's, I don't say lovable, but he's endearing. He is, exactly. He is he's like endearing. that lovable goofball. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, of oh, the guys are working, he's the oldest one. He's like yes. 35. Everyone else is like in their early 20s. Well, and they call him Graybush. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh. uh, and, and Jeff is just this kind of really weird, weird like, baby, uh, sheltered boy who lives yes. with his parents. He yeah. has a race car, car bed. <laughs> Um, oh. it's, it's funny. It is. Yeah. It's a great movie. Is it for everyone? No. No, it's not. I was going to suggest watching it with your parents today. I'm like, oh, Lori would have a tough time with this one. Yes. I, I was but, telling my sister about it and she's like, oh, I hate that movie. And I'm like, fair enough. Like, yeah. I, I can't even fault you for that because I know people don't like this movie. Yeah. I remember I showed it to Tanel years ago and she liked it. Oh, Okay. But yeah, it's a fun, it's a funny movie, but it's also it's set toward a certain audience. There's a very specific demographic yes. that it yes, will it appeal is. to. Yes. Um, so if you want to give it a shot, please do. Definitely. It's, if it's like a cup of tea, it's it's got some good funny scenes. The whole Alex and Lena is her is her uh, husband and his grandpa was a great, lovely, very scene. cute. I, I think that's the best part. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. yeah, and good. It could both kill the flick. Yes. There aren't obviously any on-screen deaths. This is a stoner comedy. But they do talk about Sophie, which was Lily's ex-roommate, dying in the room yeah. that Alex now stays in. And she kind of fake haunts him. So we're calling that the kill of the flick. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll off-screen death. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the whole scene is, you know, when uh, Alex goes in with the lady to the room, and like, she didn't down to bed. She's like, no, no, no. She died right here. She fell off the bed and died here. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just so nonchalant. Oh, and also, so no, I'll also throw in, for the second kill of the flick, JP's virginity. Oh, yeah. His chance of ever hooking up and getting laid, dead. R.I.P. Dead. Uh, like, how do you expect to have sex if you have robot legs? Robot legs? Yeah. I, wouldn't that make you better? No, because I'm sure that your torso gone. Unless you just take the legs, but... That's know. weird. That's weird. Yeah. That's, I, unless, just, maybe, I think maybe the robot voice kills it more than the legs would. Oh, honestly. Hi, um, oh, imagine him. Him, bed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> robot voice. Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my good God. Good job. Yeah, thanks. That was a Game Grump show, though. <laughs> yes. Dan, Aaron, you guys are our inspiration to us. Oh, thank yes. you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I doubt they ever want to listen to this. Never. But if they did, oh, my God. Sweet. Yeah. Oh. Next week. Next week. Next week. My favorite movie Your of all time. Your favorite movie of all time. Ever. 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 We're watching The Fifth Element. <sighs> stars Bruce Willis. So good. Stars Mila Gary Oldman. Uh. Stars... Uh, Mia, Mila Jovovich. Mila Jovovich. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, oh, the guy who just died that played Bilbo as um. Yes, I don't uh, know. The preacher don't reverend tell me guy. Guy's name. Hold on. Cornelius. Cornelius. <laughs> uh, oh, give me so some, good. Some, uh, why am I on Wikipedia still? Um, I was like, he, he just passed away. What was his name? I forget. And this. Uh, it's a sir. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Why I can't remember his name. Oh, I feel oh. so bad at the moment. Got this. You got this. Oh, that's the wrong character. It's a final counter. <laughs> do, do. <laughs> do, 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 Yes. Uh, I'll take uh, Fifth Element character for 500. <laughs> there we go. 
Great, Alex Trebek. Okay, great, great, uh, great reference there. I'm so excited. I, I am. I'm telling you right now. I'm gonna rate it five. This is. I Four. think probably because of you. This is one of my favorite movies ever too. Ever, 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 ever. I love the movie. I love the soundtrack. Yes. Uh, I love the actors. I love uh, the science fiction of it. Yes. It's and there's even there's even romance. There's romance in love. Be careful. There's romance. But it's just, it's nice. It's nice. It's beautiful. It's so quotable, too. It's very quotable. It's Ugh. got some great scenes. It's got the diva dance. Yes. It's got... Um, the diva is my favorite yes. part of the whole movie. Um, oh, and every time my parents, like, lend me money or I lend them money or, like, we pay for something. And it's like, hey, can you eat transfer me? And my mom will be like, yeah, okay. Or my dad will be like, and I'll be like, give me the cash. Yes. Give me the cash. Yes. Give me the cash. <laughs> it's so good. Like, it's so quotable. Oh, my and it's even got God. Tiny Lister as the president. And he yes. was. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's got. You know what? I'm going to stop oh right now. Oh, my God. Before I keep going, because I'm going to go into the review right I now. I was going to say, and Chris Tucker. Like, we oh, have Chris Tucker, so yes. As Ruby Rock. <laughs> super green. Super green. This movie is super green. <laughs> 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 Okay, stop. Okay, okay no. stop, stop, stop. We are, okay, okay. Yes. Ne- next week for Thelement, excited, yes. happy. We hope to see you there. Oh my Allie. God, it's going to be amazing. Yes. Thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. <laughs> this episode was brought to you by our executive producer, Ichabod. We hope you enjoyed your orgasm as much as we did. Please don't forget to rate, download, and subscribe. Also, like and follow us on Facebook at Horgasm Podcast, Instagram at Horgasm. Twitter at Gasm Horror and YouTube at the Horgasm Podcast. If you have a movie you'd like us to review, this is the best way to let us know. We hope to see you again next week because we have such sights to show you. Plenty of orgasms for you to experience. <laughs> Bye! Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>